Hey there everyone, Hatesh here back again with another video. In this video, we're going to talk about something important and before we even talk about that, I want to ask you a couple of questions because it is very important to understand why we are learning what we are learning. So let me ask you these simple questions. How do you decide that in your navigation bar there is going to be four components or maybe it's going to be five elements? How do you decide that? How do you decide that in your web page there are going to be like four column grids or three column grids? When designing a mobile app, how do you decide that you're going to choose a scrollable item or a fixed item of a fixed height? Where to put images, where to put videos? All of these questions need to be answered. Now yes, I do understand that at a basic scale, when you are designing a simple website, these things are overlooked. But for a company like Flipkart or maybe Amazon or Uber, these things cannot be overlooked. In today's video, we're going to answer all of these questions that how these things are designed and are being produced at a higher company like big giants, Google, Amazon, Flipkart and all these things coming up in this video. Whenever you are working for a big client or big company or you are working as a job and in any big kind of company, there is a concept known as wireframing that everybody follows. And a lot of beginners when they move into company scales which are good in producing products, they use wireframing and these beginners just look like, oh, what on this God's green earth is wireframing? So let me give you a quick introduction of what is wireframing, what are the tools that you can use for wireframing and it's the easiest process in the development phase. Yes, I do agree that there are experts of wireframing and putting the content on the web page, but it's not like always you have to hire an expert and have to deal with that. Many times your company people like your head of the company, your team manager and your developer just sit together, do a brainstorming and can come up with a really good wireframing. So what actually is a wireframing? Wireframing is simply an idea of how you want your data to be shown up there. Now here's a quick hint about wireframing. If you think that something is in just one color black and white, that is probably a wireframing. In wireframing, we are not worried about how our buttons are going to look like, what color we'll be choosing. It's all about data. What kind of data we want the user to just see at the very first end known as primary data and what are the data that can be moved onto the second page so that user clicks on it and sees that data. Now this is a really really controversial decision. Sometimes people do agree with that, sometimes people don't agree that. Usually that happens with a vote being cast between developers, designers, head of the team and all these people. In wireframing, we don't use any kind of images, any kind of colors or any kind of video data. It's all about mocking up the screen. For the images, just use a kind of a regular image which doesn't even deplete the image. Usually a cross sign is being used for images. Now the goal here is I want an image at this section and I want a data at this section. It is not being talked about what should be in that data, what the line we should use, what should be our tagline. All these are not being discussed at this phase. More important question is what should be in our navigation bar and where should be our navigation bar. If we want to display an image, that's it. We want an image here. How our website should look like, whether three grid columns or maybe four grid columns how our app should look like. The tiles that you see at Instagram, the top image, the button should be there. These are all first done in the mockups. Mockups are basically mainly of two types. Yes, a lot of people just disagree with there that there can be a variety of mockups, but usually they are just two types. The one is low fidelity and the second one is high fidelity. In the low fidelity, you can just pick up a pen, paper, maybe a Sharpie or a marker and can just start drawing on a piece of paper. Now I always say that it is far more easier in the design process to change anything. If you didn't like it, just throw out the paper, bring up a new paper and just start designing on that. These low fidelity paperwork always saves you a lot of time as compared to when making these changes with the development phase. Doing up all these things on pen, paper and sharpies is known as the low fidelity wireframing. Now yes, sometimes people like to work on the mid fidelity as well in which the user flow is defined that when user will be logging in how it will just go through and how the login process and all these flow work but usually it is avoided in the wireframing because there is a separate team working with that 
along with the database guys and all of that. Now here comes the second stage of the fidelity. Now once everything is being sorted out on pen and paper, everybody just agreed or somehow disagreed on that. Now it's final, it's done. Then you move on to the next stage, which is I call as high fidelity. In the high fidelity, people like to use software. Now, one of the industry standard software is Blasmic. Now, I have seen experts walking through with the Blasmics like just anything, but it doesn't mean that you also have to use Blasmic. All of these fidelity work can be done in any kind of software like Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketch, or maybe you want to use anything else. You can use that as well. Now, only thing that you have to take care is don't use any color, don't use any kind of button format or image at all. You just want to go with a very broad way of putting up the data. Just use a cross for images or maybe some blank bars for the graphics of the text. This is done so that you cannot concentrate on what is data and rather you concentrate on what data I want the user to see at my front page or home page or about page or whatever that page is. For such kind of high fidelity things, I don't use Blasmic. I'm not an expert in that. I have tried and worked on it. I didn't like it that much. For that, I again use Sketch. But again, this doesn't mean you also have to use Sketch. There is one very good service known as Mockups, and this is also being used quite a lot in industry. The reason being that it can also design flows and prototypes and all of that. So it's a very common service. But again, there is no match for Blasmic. It's just kind of a rock solid thing. There are a couple of other services that as a beginner you can try and use. One of them is wireframe.cc, totally free and completely browser based. So you can quickly design your website and can just figure out what should be the navigation bar, how your app should look like, what kind of image you want to put there. Again, not being sponsored by anyone, just trying to share what the industry is using and what I like. It's a well-known fact by everyone that the more you're gonna sweat in the practice, the less you will bleed in the war. I always recommend to do more brainstorming at the process of wireframing and prototyping instead of just having a developer and changing all the things regularly like change this button, move this button here and there. This is not at all an ideal practice. You are investing more cost and more money by changing all the things in the developer phase. Don't do that. Always work out in the wireframing and the prototype phase. Now here comes an interesting question and which is the companies like Uber, Flipkart, Amazon can do these kinds of wireframing and prototyping. But if you are just a freelancer who want to design a website for a, for a person who doesn't barely know that what he wants on a website is actually much more trickier than what you are expecting. Doing all kind of these wireframing and prototyping for that person is obviously going to increase the cost. So sometimes developer at a small industry always like to skip these parts. But this is not a good practice and obviously you will be chatting with more clients, investing more time in that. So make sure you tell your client that first, hey, go ahead, pick up a pen and paper and just show me that how your website should look like. What are the elements that you are expecting there on your website? I have dropped number of clients on web development and app development who were not even ready of thinking about what they actually want. And these kinds of clients who always just keep you busy and as I always say, time is money. So you don't want to invest with these kinds of freelancing clients who have absolutely no idea what they are looking up when they are building up a website. Or you can charge them extra for the consultancy that you are giving them that, hey, how your navigation bar should look like or what data you should be putting up on. I have even dealt up with the clients that have absolutely no idea what there should be on their about page or what should be their tagline. Really, really hard to work with such clients. Okay, one more side note. I have seen a lot of resume which comes with my at my friend's company and sometimes we just talk about it. A lot of resume just comes up with having a, a panel in their resume, a kind of a corner where just we say software skills and a lot of people just put their Microsoft Word, Excel and all such things. Hey, you're applying for a development company, IT company. This software doesn't really mean anything there. The software that people are looking up when they are hiring are such kind of softwares like Photoshop, Illustrator, Sketch, Blasmic and all such things. So stop putting down that Microsoft Word there and start working on something good. The software that actually means something. Maybe you want to put Jira there. Maybe you want to put Trello there or maybe you want to put some Atlassian software there. So go ahead, get started with how the industry is shaping up and stop just copying and pasting that template that was being designed like 10 years ago.
I hope you have enjoyed this video. In case you have enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And in case you want to get the notification, there is a bell icon too. Sometimes it just works, sometimes it doesn't. That's it for this video and I'll surely catch you up in the next one. And yes, don't forget to visit learncodeonline.in and download our apps at Google Play Store and iOS Store as well. and see what's real.